السلام علیکم و رحمۃ اللہ وبرکاتہ اوز باللہ من الشیطان الرجیم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم ٹوڈے آئی وڈ لائک ٹو ٹاک اباؤٹ جیزس کرائسٹ ان اسلام واٹ از دا پرسپیکٹو دیٹ مسلمس ہیو اباؤٹ جیزس کرائسٹ پیس بی اپان ہیم ان اسلام اینڈ ان آڈر ٹو شو یو دیٹ لیٹ می ٹیک یو ٹو دی ویب سائٹ الاسلام ڈاٹ آرگ ویئر یو کین سی آئی ہیو آلریڈی ٹائپڈ ان دا سرچ بار جیزس And we have a few options, a few articles that uh, are, are showing up here. But there's a page that is dedicated to Jesus Christ right here, the second link, alislam.org forward slash library forward slash Jesus. And if you click on that, this is the page that shows up, which is about Jesus uh, Christ uh, entirely, his birth, his death, and some resources about Jesus Christ, especially the one of uh, uh, the, the book, Jesus in India, which is written by Hazrat Mirza Ghulam Ahmed, peace be upon him, founder of the Ahmadiyya Muslim community, and some other uh, resources about Jesus Christ are available on this page for your reading pleasure. The other thing I wanted to show you is this website, holyquran.site. And uh, it is a bit cropped because it uh, goes all the way to the edges. Of the screen here but uh, hopefully you can see that uh, I have searched in the search bar Isa which is the Arabic term for Jesus and there are a bunch of verses that show up that are referring to Isa alayhi salam and what you can do is if you don't uh, know how to type Arabic I mean of course you can just click on the keyboard for Arabic and and search in Arabic but if you don't know uh, how to do that you can also search in English as you can see on this page I have searched for the term Jesus uh, in the Quran here um, and uh, there are verses, there are 28 verses that are found which are referring to Jesus. A lot of our Christian uh, brothers and sisters are remembering Jesus Christ uh, today because it's Easter Sunday and I thought uh, to just mention a little bit and talk a little bit about Jesus Christ in Islam as well and what our perspective is. And you can see from these verses that I just showed on the screen that there are, there's a lot of praise of Jesus Christ in the Holy Quran. Let me also take you to uh, the Al-Islam main page where uh, the discussion is there uh, for, and the search option is there for Jesus. And here, right here on the search Quran translation, we can search here as well about Jesus and we will get results again same 28 results found and uh, I'm going here because it's easier to for you to see it on screen uh, from this page the other page is a little stretched Zalika Isa ibn Maryam qawl al-haqq allazi fihi yamtarun such was Jesus son of Mary this is a statement of the truth about which they doubt so there th- these are the verses that appear about uh, Jesus Christ and uh, and how he was treated by his opponents in the beginning when he appeared to them and uh, how he was among the prophets of Allah. For instance, this verse from chapter 33, verse 8, verse 8 which says, وَإِذْ أَخَذْنَا مِنَ النَّبِيِّينَ مِيثَاقَهُمْ وَمِنْكَ وَمِنْ نُوحٍ وَإِبْرَاهِيمَ وَمُوسَى وَعِيسَى بْنِ مَرْيَمَ So he, he's, he's considered among the prophets and the covenant And just like the other prophets, uh, he also took the covenant. And his followers are referred to as Al-Havariyun. Uh, it says, Is qal al-Havariyun ya Isa ibn Maryam hal yastati'u rabbuka an yunazzila alayna ma'idatam minas sama? When the disciples said, O oh Jesus, son of Mary, is thy Lord able to send down to us a table spread with food from heaven? He said, Fear Allah if you are believers. And then it says here in chapter 4, verse 164, Inna awhayna ilayka kama awhayna ila nuhim wa nabiyyina min ba'dih wa awhayna ila Ibrahim wa Ismail wa Ishaq wa Yaqub wa Lasbati wa Isa wa Ayyub wa Yunus wa Harun wa Sulaiman. Surely we have sent revelation to thee as we sent revelation to Noah and the prophets after him. And we sent revelation to Abraham and Isaac and Jacob and his children and to Jesus and Job, and Jonah, and Aaron, and Solomon, and we gave David a book. So all these uh, verses that talk about uh, the humanity of Jesus, 
the fact that he was just one of the prophets. That's one of the core beliefs in Islam, that Jesus Christ was a prophet of God and not more than that. Um, of course, some people believe that he was not just a human, but he was also divine. So the Quran or the Islamic position on Jesus Christ is that he was a human being, a humble servant of God. And this is found, uh, there's evidence of this found in the New Testament as well. If you open the Gospel of Mark, and if you read the Gospel of Mark, you will find that there is that humanity of Jesus that is quite apparent in the verses in the Gospel of Mark where Jesus uh, says certain things and expresses certain things which which basically show us that he is a human being and not more than that. Um, there is uh, that verse in Mark chapter 12 verses 28 to 30 when a person came and asked him about the most important commandment and Jesus responded by saying that the first commandment is, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. That is, God is one, and we should love our God with all our heart, with all our strength, and with all our might. And so that's such a beautiful verse, which is basically stating Tawheed. In Islam, Tawheed is very important. The oneness of God is very important. Believing that God is only one and there is no associate with God is very important. It's, very central. it's a very central tenet in Islam. And if you open the, the, the Old Testament, the Hebrew Bible, and you will find in, for instance, verses like Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 4, and other verses and the first of the Ten Commandments, you will see that it is also emphasizing the oneness of God, the fact that God is only one and there is no associate with God. And the idea of associating parts with God or having idols and those kind of things is strongly, strongly refuted uh, in the Old Testament and it is also refuted in the Holy Quran. So from the perspective of Islam, Jesus Christ was a noble, honorable prophet of God, but he was not more than that. He was not um, just a prophet of God and something else as well. A lot of Christians would say he was a prophet of God and he was also divine. We believe that he was not divine in that sense, that uh, he was, uh, he, he was, there was divinity manifested through him, just like divinity is manifested through the other prophets of, uh, of Allah, the other prophets of God, and Jesus Christ was similar to them in that sense, but he was not uh, more than that. He was simply a human being uh, who came to preach the message of the oneness of God to the Jews of his time. He's, he talks about the lost sheep of Israel, which is in reference to the lost tribes of Israel and the different tribes of Israel. And his message was for these different tribes of Israel. And that's what he came to do. Um, the Quran also talks about uh, uh, the giving of Injil. In chapter 5, verse 47, it says, وَقَفَّيْنَا عَلَىٰ آثَارِهِمْ بِعِيسَ بْنِ مَرْيَمَ مُصَدِّقًا لِمَا بَيْنَ يَدَيْهِ مِنَ التَّوْرَاتِ وَآتَيْنَاهُ الْإِنْجِيلَ فِيهِ هُدًا وَنُورِ The Quran is very clear here that we cause Jesus, Son of Mary, to follow in their footsteps, fulfilling that which was revealed before him in the Torah. That's important because his mission was to fulfill what was already in the Torah. And that fulfillment happened as he was a prophet of God. Uh, because the Jews were not waiting for a Messiah who, who would be one, uh, who would be the literal son of God or who would be uh, one with God in the sense, in the, in the literal sense, and that he would be God himself. The Jews were not waiting for that kind of Messiah. The Jews were waiting for just a human Messiah who would, uh, uh, who would guide them. And uh, it, uh, Allah says in the Holy Quran, we gave him the gospel which contained guidance and light. So the Quran is saying here that there is guidance and that there is light in the Gospels. And even today, the Gospels that we have with us today have that guidance and that light uh, in the sense that uh, there is uh, there are verses in, in, in the Gospels even today, like I referred to Mark. Uh, I refer to Mark chapter 12, verses 28 to 30. I've, you know, the, the, the whole Gospel of Mark has many instances which show that there is guidance and that there is light in the gospel, that at least from the Islamic perspective, we believe um, the gospels are not available to us in their original form, but the form in which they are available to us, there is guidance and light in them still. So there you go. That's the Islamic perspective 
of Jesus Christ. Just a few uh, verses of the Holy Quran that I shared with you today uh, that talk about Jesus Christ in Islam. Oneness of first Christians, is it established? Uh, when Jesus Christ came, of course, his, he had the Havari Yun. The Quran talks about his disciples. They were united. But we do see evidence of Paul disagreeing with the disciples. And St. Paul, as he is known in Christianity, he uh, talks about this disagreement, his disagreement with the other disciples in the book of Galatians. And that book of Galatians is uh, in the New Testament. You can read the book of Galatians to see that evidence of him disagreeing with the other disciples. He doesn't go into a lot of details on the names of those disciples or what kind of specific disagreements he had. He did have, a, he did mention about uh, circumcision and he did mention about uh, food eating rituals and, uh, and how uh, he was very lax about letting Gentiles, the non-Jews, um, you know, come into the fold of Christianity and, and not following all the rules. And, and, as, and also about circumcision, he talks about it. And in the book of uh, Romans as well, he talks about circumcision as not required but that's St. Paul, and um, that's, uh, he was not a disciple. He was not a direct disciple. Christians believe that he is a disciple in the spiritual sense because he saw Jesus after uh, his resurrection. But of course, in the life of Jesus that he spent in the, in the area of Palestine, we believe that he survived the cross and then he migrated towards India. That's another separate discussion. But the time that he spent in Palestine, uh, Jesus Christ... Uh, you know, did not, uh, if, say, Paul was not his follower. Paul was not his disciple. Paul was actually an opponent of Jesus at that time. So uh, a lot of Christians do accept the writings of Paul as authentic and uh, as a source of their faith. But that's a stream of Christianity that is coming through the filter, through the eyes of Paul. There were other Christianities at the time, uh, in, the, uh, in the early days, and uh, that were not influenced by Paul. And there were groups like the Ebionites we know of who believed in Jesus Christ as a prophet of God and did not see him as, as divine. Those streams of Christianity did exist at that time. Of course, there is limited information about them. There, is, uh, there are very limited sources about them because uh, the Christianity that won out in the end was the Pauline Christianity, which is coming from Paul. And uh, that Christianity which is coming through the, through the, the filter of Paul, uh, that is the one that gained dominance uh, for whatever other reasons. That's another historical topic. But um, before that gained dominance, there were others, uh, of course, at that time, and they were writing at that time as well. The other thing about Paul is that he had an advantage in being a very literate person. He was an academic person. He knew how to read and write. He knew Greek. Greek was the intellectual language of the time. You know, like nowadays, English is a dominant language of the time. Um, at that time, Greek was a very dominant language of the time and all the studies and books were written and writings were done in Greek. Even the Gospels originally were written in Greek. So Paul had that advantage of having a large audience uh, as compared to the other followers of Jesus who could not read and write and who could not have that kind of audience that Paul had. So Paul had an advantage in that as well, which is one of the reasons why um, th that form of Christianity spread more quickly as opposed to the other forms. Talai is saying that uh, you misunderstood my question. My question was, there any Khilafat after Prophet Jesus and uh, other prophets? After Prophet Jesus, uh, the promise, uh, Hazrat Muslim Adil Diyalano has talked about uh, the, a form of Khilafat continuing. So the bishop in Rome, uh, I, I believe the first one was Peter, one of the disciples of Jesus. Peter was the first, uh, you can say, bishop of Rome or the first uh, one to follow him and, and to, to be a successor. There's also evidence that Thomas was in Jerusalem. So we believe that the Jewish Christianity, uh, that stream of Christianity that related to the Jews and that stayed to the true message of Jesus was carried on by Thomas 
And then after Thomas, he must have had some other successors. But of course, that stream of Christianity was lost to history. But in, in, in Rome, uh, one of the uh, disciples of Jesus, Peter, uh, became a leader of a church. And that uh, leadership turned into you know, a higher and higher and higher status until it became the institution of papacy. Right? We have the Pope today who's a dis, who, not a descendant but an inheritor of this office that goes all the way to the time of Jesus and his successor Peter. Um, what are the details of that? We don't have a lot of details. Um, Christians might have some traditions, but uh, of course, very strong uh, history of that is not available. Um, after that, there were other successors. There were other popes that came. So in one form or another, that's, that Khilafat, as you might want to call it, did exist, but it did not remain pure from errors and mistakes. And of course, one of the popes even declared the Crusades, even began, I, I believe his name was Pope Urban II. He started the Crusades and it, a lot of bloodshed happened because of that. But that's uh, those political um, message, the, the political positions of uh, those uh, Popes continued for many, many centuries uh, until we have the papacy today in the Vatican. Um, so in one form or another, that Khilafat continued. With the Holy Prophet ﷺ, similarly, there was the Khilafat uh, in the beginning, the rightly guided Khulafa, and then after that it turned into a form of kingdom, and that kingdom uh, had some good leaders and some bad leaders as well. Um, and then it was in, with the Umayyads first, and then it was came to the Abbasids. After the Abbasids, uh, it came to the Mamluks for a little bit, period of time. Then from the Mamluks, um, the Ottomans um, do sort of take uh, that uh, baton over. Um, it's also called as Khilafat Usmania. Uh, but some Muslims would dispute that. Uh, but in any case, that sort of kingdom continued with uh, the Ottomans. And then at the same time as the Ottomans, there were the Safavids, which, which, are in, which were in Iran. And at the same time, there were the Mughals in India. So some sort of kingdom continued. Um, there is also the other line with the Mujaddideen. So we have one of the kings of the Umayyads well, is considered as the first Mujaddid. He was a very good leader. Uh, I believe his name was Hazrat Umar bin Abdul Aziz. And then after that, there were other Mujaddids who came uh, who were leaders of the Islamic world, who were teachers of the Islamic world, and they continued uh, for a long time. Hamid has asked, when we discuss with, uh, with proofs about Hazrat Masih Ma'ud al-Islam, Christians say yes, there's a prophecy in the Bible about the false Messiah or false prophets. Please address this allegation. You know, uh, yes, there are, there, are, there are discussion in the Bible about false uh, Messiahs coming and false prophets coming, but the Bible also gives us some indication of what a true Messiah would look like, what are the signs of the coming of the true Messiah, and those signs have already appeared. For instance, the coming of the Messiah, it, it says that there will be wars and rumors of wars, and there will be earthquakes, and there will be eclipse of the sun and the moon. Let me head on over to the website alislam.org, and let's see if we can find it. Uh, some article here, uh, signs of the Messiah in the Bible. That's what I'm typing in the search bar. Let's see if uh, we get some, uh, you know, you can see some of these articles here that these signs uh, talk about the advent of the promised Messiah, alayhi salam, and they have been fulfilled. We can't just randomly say, uh, oh yeah, whoever comes is going to be false. If, if everyone who comes is going to be false, then we are ignoring even the Bible because the Bible lists some of the signs that will take place uh, when the Messiah um, comes. And for us to just ignore all those would be, would be very wrong. So, for instance, let's take the prophecy about Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in Deuteronomy chapter 18, verses 15 to 20. Now, it lists certain characteristics that the, the Prophet would have. And if you look at the life of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, word for word, letter for letter, that prophecy has proven true. There are nine elements in that prophecy that he will speak in the name of God. Uh, whatever he says would be the truth. Uh, he will be from among the brethren 
of the Israelites. So he's an Ishmaelite. Uh, he would, you know, it's, it's, it goes on and on and on. If you break down the prophecy little by little by little, you will see a long list of, uh, you know, fulfilled aspects of that prophecy. And as I have talked about before as well, if you go into the book, Muhammad in the Bible, you search for the book Muhammad in the Bible on alislam.org, you will find a lot of information uh, available uh, on this subject in that book. And you can, you know, point those aspects little by little, how everything has been fulfilled in the time of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa and in the time of Hazrat Mirza Ghulam Ahmed as well. Wadud is saying, is there any literature on Christianity in Jamaat? Can you name all, please? Um, I showed in the beginning of uh, my broadcast as well. And uh, so what you can do is you can go to alislam.org and type in the search bar Jesus. And there's a page about Jesus that appears here. And if you go down, all this list of uh, books and materials related to Jesus are available here on this page. Um, and, uh, you know, some other, from some sections of the book, Invitation to Ahmadiyyat, also um, are mentioned here. So you can, you can, you know, go through these resources that are available here, hopefully that uh, s satisfy your curiosity. I would suggest that if you are starting on this uh, subject, start with the book, Jesus in India, right here, number one, Jesus in India, written by Hazrat Mirza Ghulam Ahmad alayhi salam. And then from there, you can go and read some other books as well that are available on alislam.org that relate to Christianity. This is the Naskin Imam, and I am doing a live broadcast where I am uh, responding to questions about Islam, about Ahmadiyyat. This live broadcast is linked with the official website of the Ahmadiyya Muslim community, www.alislam.org. I'm getting a lot of comments today. I'm already over the time that I allocated for this, but I'm here for a few extra minutes just to see if I can respond to all the comments. Um, Hamid is saying two months ago, we had a long discussion with a seventh day evangelist pastor and told him about the second coming of the Messiah. Uh, he told about prophecy in the book of Revelation that people will see with their own eyes. This own eyes was not in the case of Elijah. Yes, you're right. This did not happen in the, in the case of Elijah. Um, so you can tell him that, you know, Jesus Christ said John the Baptist is Elijah. And Jews are still waiting for the return of Elijah. So if we start taking prophecies too literally, then we would go on the wrong path and we would not be able to uh, get uh, the right information uh, and we wouldn't be able to get on the right track when it comes to... Uh, to prophecies. It, prophecies have to be understood in light of the right context. There are certain prophecies. Uh, prophecies have certain aspects that are fulfilled literally, and then there are certain other, other aspects of prophecies that are fulfilled in the metaphorical sense. Abdul Shakur is saying that there's been mention of other Jesus, alayhi salam's brother, following him as Khalifa. This is mentioned in uh, a book of Hazrat Mirza Tahir Ahmed, uh, Christianity, A Journey from Facts to Fiction. And in that book, you can uh, find some information on this topic of uh, Thomas uh, as a brother of Jesus who, um, who followed Jesus uh, after uh, he had uh, moved out or migrated from that and then he continued with that message. He was in Jerusalem. He's also referred to in the uh, in the Gospels, but very, very briefly. So from the New Testament, we know very little about Thomas. But Hazrat Khalifa al Masih Rabe, Hazrat Mirza Tahir Ahmed Ramul Ta'ala talked about it, talked about him in his book, Christianity, a Journey from Facts to Fiction. Uh, Abdul Shakur has commented, and this would be the last one I will take. Some Christians... Criticize Islam saying Trinity is God, Jesus, Holy Spirit, and not God, Jesus, and Mary. But the Quran says the latter. No, the Quran does not say the latter. The Quran says that did Jesus, did the people consider Jesus and his mother as gods? The Quran is saying that Mary was considered a god now or divine in some sense. And interestingly, the worship of Jesus 
became a very entrenched aspect of Christianity by the 6th century. So uh, the 5th uh, and 6th centuries of, of Christianity, you, saw, you can see that Mary had earned a status of a saint to whom people started worshipping and people started praying to her. This became part of Christianity in the 5th and 6th centuries, just a few decades before the Quran came and rectified this belief. And so this idea that Mary can listen to prayers and she's, uh, she can respond to prayers and the Mary being considered the mother of God and very divine in that sense, this idea in Christianity was very early and still exists today. It still exists today in Catholicism. And uh, you can speak to Catholics. You can, one of the criticisms that Protestants have against Catholicism is this idea of worshiping to Mary and, and praying to Mary. And Protestants don't like this, but Catholicism has this. And so the Quran is not wrong in saying that Mary is considered... Mary, the Quran has never equated Mary uh, with the Trinity. The Quran hasn't done that. Uh, the Quran does talk about the Trinity, and Christians can define the Trinity however they like. And because there were multiple explanations of the Trinity, the Quran did not bother with explaining what, they, what they're saying because it's a changing uh, explanation and changing definitions. And what exactly do Christians mean by the Trinity is an open question even today. So the Quran referred to the Trinity, but the Quran didn't say that Jesus and God and Mary are part of the Trinity. That's not what the Quran ever asserts anywhere in, the, uh, in there. The Quran only talks about how Mary was considered divine in some sense and prayed to in some sense. And that was definitely happening. You can open any Christian history book. You can uh, search this anywhere and you would be able to find this, this aspect of Christianity has always been there. And there's clear evidence um, uh, is definitely there.